check this out. December fishing on this river. You can see behind me, campground behind me. No one here. It's awesome. It's cold, but there's no one on the river. So you gotta like that even though you're cold. It's a good time to be out here. A lot of people in fly fishing are fair weather anglers and that's fine if you like getting out here when it's warm and nice and sunny. I don't blame you, but today it's cold and it's December and there's nobody here. So that's a benefit to fishing in December. So if you guys wanna hit some water that can be crammed with people, go when it's cold outside because uh, most everyone is gone. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit today about hot tag nymphs kind of what they're all about, you know, what my kind of strategy is for using them, possibly pit them head to head against some nymphs that don't have hot tags today and just kind of see which one throughout this December day works best and see what happens. Okay, when I first started out, you know, started nymphing and I had never heard of a hot tag nymph. And when I found out about hot spots and hot tags and gave them a try, I was kind of like amazed at how well they worked. So, my basic strategy with my box is that I have this box divided out in weight rows. So I have two mil, three mil, well this is two and a half mil and two millimeter beads, three mil beads, three and a half mil beads, and four millimeter beads. And what I will do is I will tie similar patterns with tags, hot tags, hot spots on the nymph, and then I'll tie those same patterns completely devoid of the hot spot. And so, you know, some days you'll find that a fish are really keyed in on a specific pattern, but they don't want necessarily a hot spot. And then some days you'll find that they do want a hot spot. So when I talk about hot spots, I'm talking about a tail that's bright, a body that's bright, or a bead that's bright, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can add color to a fly that's really bright like that, like a hot spot. So that's kind of what I'm talking about when I talk about hot tag nymphs. So I think today what we'll do is I'll run two flies for the day with the same weight beads so that the flies are descending at the same rate within the water column. And I'll use one fly that has a hot spot and one fly that doesn't have a hot spot. And then just kind of see what happens from there. So let's get rigged up and head down to the water. I'm gonna start off with two waltz worms. I've got just a basic silver, just a basic silver waltz. And then I'm using one of the hot spots that's got a pink bead. And we're gonna see how those two work to start out. They both have a three mil bead. There's a fish. Feels like a really good fish. It is just working me right now. My drag is way too loose. Gosh, dang. I don't know what this is. Might be a big old white fish. I don't know which fly it took. I'm curious if it took the natural waltz or if it took the pink bead. But we'll find out here. Oh, it's a huge rainbow, actually. And a, a huge rainbow. And it looks like it took. You guys, it has a tank, and I don't know if you can see, but this fish has both flies in its mouth. It had the silver and the pink. I mean, look at that fish to start with, you guys. Huge wild red band to start. Such a good way to start the day there. And there he goes. Woo. Okay, my hands are real cold after handling that fish. I need to get some gloves or something. Um, that's cool. Both of those flies were in that fish's mouth. If I had to guess, it was the pink one. I don't think it got wrapped up but there's a chance, but it's just, I've never had a fish wrap where both flies were in the fish's mouth and both of them were stuck in the mouth. I don't know if he ate both of them, that would be insane. Uh, that was a cool fish, cool way to start. 
I think he ate the pink hot spot fly. Uh, so we'll just keep fishing up this edge. I got kind of a soft edge here that I'll show you guys. So there's that edge. I'm gonna keep working up this, and it's not really winter water, but the very edge of it, when the water is a little bit higher, you will find fish in that real soft edge uh, because there's not a lot of current and there's still food. So we'll work up this, see if we can find some more. I think my plan is, is to fish the waltz in this next spot. If the waltz doesn't work, I'll probably switch to a hot spot pheasant tail and a regular pheasant tail and see what happens there and kind of see what they're keyed in on. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna fish straight in front of me as much as possible versus off to the side and see if we can pick up some fish in this side soft water here. And we'll go off to the side too. So we'll kind of fish both kind of both sections of water. See what we can find here. Okay, I'm just gonna continue up this edge. Okay, so I'm gonna continue up this edge. I got two flies, a little hot spot quiltagon, and a France fly. They're not the same exact pattern, but they are differences in hot spots by a lot. The France fly is much more of a realistic looking pattern. And the quiltagon has some realistic aspects to it but has a hot an orange hot spot collar. So we shall see. Try to get up and behind that rock there. I'm gonna try it out over in this pocket here. There's a nice pocket on the other side of this rock here. There's a fish, really good fish. Oh gosh. Oh, that's a heavy fish. I don't want it to get down below, down below me. Try to keep it in this soft current here. No, 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 no. I've got the angle on it right now, but oh, it's in that current and I can't. Okay, I'm gonna switch them to this side and try to bring them around down here. Okay, I'm gonna have to move down here with them. Keep the tension. Ah, oh, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, he jumped. That was cool. I don't know if you guys saw it. Try to get him. Got some tension on him here. Here he comes, head up, head up, head up, head up, reach. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Okay, I got him back over here. Okay, I think I'm gonna be able to get him this time. Nope, nope. Ah keeps doing that. I get him close. And then, ah, you gotta be kidding me. No, 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 no. He's way out there again. I just had it all the way. I just had this fish all the way back in. Ah, we gotta see which fly he ate too. Oh my gosh. Whew. Okay, let's hold him up. That's a cool fish right there. Cool rainbow. Okay, let's get him back. Super cool fish. What a cool fish that is. So pretty. Okay, so I don't know how the rest of the day is gonna go, but if it's all gonna be fish like that, it's a cool day. So far that's two fish on hot tag or hot spot nymphs, not on naturals so far, but it could change throughout the day. So I'm just gonna keep going with it and see what happens. Keep working off this bank. Dropped back in the run here after that other fish. I wonder if there's more fish sulking 
back in this deep water. So I put on some heavier flies for this deep water. I just want to see if that changes things at all. Okay, new spot, new spot, new water. Okay, so I'm trying to get out of the wind for you guys so that you can actually hear what I'm saying here. But I wanted to tell you guys the four kind of ways to implement hot spots within your fly, or at least the four that I use the most, okay? The first one is the bead. You can always add a super bright bead to your fly. That one to me is the most obnoxious of all the ways that you can add a hot spot to your fly is to take a fly, to take a fly and add a really bright bead to that fly. That's real obnoxious, that's right in their face, but it's a good way to add a hot spot. So the next way to add a hot spot is the collar of the fly. So up next to the bead, you can use hot thread or ice stubbing or anything like that to create a hot spot on the collar of the fly. That's another great way. And then as we move back down the fly, at the butt of the fly, a lot of times I like to add thread right before the tail as a hot spot there. And then I think the last one that I use that's pretty obvious is the tail of the fly, the very end. You can add a hot tag there as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can implement hot spots. And as you've seen today, uh, so far, hot spots are working great. Fish love them. Um, I think it's an easy way for them to differentiate between the stuff that's floating by if something catches their eye, but then it still looks like an insect. They wanna go over there and see if it's something they can eat you know, get that food source. So those are kind of the four ways that I like to do it. There are other ways too. You can use hot spots, resins. You can add resin to your fly in all different ways, but uh, those are kind of my, my four mains. So I found a spot out of the wind. I'm gonna jump down here and uh, see if we can find some more fish before it gets too crazy windy out here because it's, it's turned into one of those days. So let's do it. Okay, it's real windy. Hopefully you can hear me here. I got a waltz with a hot tag and then uh, just a regular waltz see if it makes any difference here there's a fish let's see what he ate ate the hot tag waltz see it right there let him go Fish. I want him to spook everything else in the spot here. And he ate just the regular waltz. So that's one for the regular waltz. And could have been the best fish there. And I. Hey you guys, super pretty little fish. Okay you guys, it is just so windy out here. I cannot, the fish are eating, but the wind is just such a challenge. So I'm calling it a day there. Hopefully you guys found some information in here that was helpful about how I like to fish hot tags. And uh, I was gonna turn this into a little bit of a challenge, but it's just not enough time in the day with this weather. So I'm going to get out of here. Hit that sub button if you like the video. It helps out a lot. And I'll catch you guys in the video again next week. Till then, catch fish.